being kind of collided. In other words, if you look at the poem, man, image of God, man, image of God, right? And male and female, man. So, do you understand that the text is suggesting that there's something male and female about God? No surprise when the rabbis have to talk about the creation of the first Adam. The first Adam is androgynous. Take a look. Shmuel bar Nachman said, when the Holy One created the first Adam, he created a two-faced, meaning male and female, and later sawed it in half, back here, back there, right? Or, uh, you imagine that uh, uh, there's another text in the beginning where Yermia says that uh, the first Adam was androgynous bravo. This androgynous being is then separated, and then heterosexual union then is, is then what? It is the uniting of the male and female that was once together in that original androgynous being. Okay? Now, once again, this is really actually quite beautiful, but of course the problematics of this begin. Because we have a suspicion, even though it's much better than Adam created first, it makes no sense. Adam is male, God makes the Adam in God's image, then God should be male. So the text is already begging us to see God is both male and female, and then therefore the first single creature had to be male and female. So it really comes directly out of this material, right? But the problematics are, is that where does, how, how do you see the hierarchy take place? Already there's a discussion. There are two positions about hierarchy here, and they come in this text. Rav Yirmiya ben Elazar says that the first Adam was androgynous. Uh, Rushul ben Nachman says, well, not quite, more like Siamese twins, male facing this way, female facing that way. Still in one body. What's the difference between these two things? <laughs> what the androgynous being is an integrated, I would say, beyond sex being, totally united. This is already a bifurcated being. So when we're thinking about the image of God, we also have two images. The first man kind of reflects up. So is God an androgynous being where gender, typology, and distinction is not there? There's no conflict inside of the Godhead. Or is there already a little male-female conflict inside of the Godhead? So already you get some kind of tension, and you will act, and of course, Shulba Nachman is going to demonstrate because he says, which way did this creature having two faces, how did he walk, or she? How did he get walk? Male face going first. So already there's a tension, and already there's a little bit of a hierarchy, and of course as we go on in the story of Adam and Eve, we discover that the hierarchy increases, while woman is the one who's bold, right? She is the one that is um, cursed with being sub subject to her husband. Elishet to Shukatech, the Huyim Shulbach, to your husband will be desired and he shall rule over you. And all of the following frames of the failure of the garden. One second, okay? All the following failures of the frames of the garden, all the problems emerge here really powerfully. What are they? That the animal and the human world are going to be at odds with each other now. That work will be painful now. That men and women will will be at odds with each other now, right? All these struggles were born. Creation is not any longer sweet and beautiful. In other words, Adam and Eve look beautiful under the chuppah in the garden before they have a conversation. <laughs> but all of a sudden they start talking, and she wants this, and he doesn't. Have it. And then there's trouble, and, and the garden looks broken, fractured. <coughs> problematic and hierarchically divided, right? Comes the mystics of the 16th century and they um, invent a, a, a ritual called Kiddush Levana. I'm going to introduce Kiddush Levana in the last like 10, 15 minutes and then we're going to be done. Yes? Well, it seems to me that in the text already, the God may add and God may add and God you already have not only have that tension of the sort of duality of creatures, you have that, some of you have a metaphor of the situation of the tension in creation, that you've got God first and then the Adam. Um, it's simply because I've got tension between the minute God and the That really this whole sort of separation, male females, really, in some ways, a metaphor to the fact that if you have creation, you have that which is separate from God because that's my kind of creation. 
Yes, absolutely. Creation is about another other than God and poses, you know, even kaharut, as it says, we had less a competition. That's true, too. You're absolutely right. Creation is actually sets up both the work plan for God and the, and the disappointment for God. But here, what I want to get at is, is that the, 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 the creation story has problems in it that are unrecognized. Doesn't it sound like heterosexuality that is beautiful and full of unrecognized problems? Beautiful and full of unrecognized problems. Having in part to do with um, certain expectations and particularly the hierarchy set up both biologically and socially and culturally in the way men and women relate. I want to go to this text because if we don't get there we're going to miss it out. Well, I think I can Genesis 23 is one of the ways that I can explain this is that it comes after the creation of animals, that Adam was lonely still even after the animals were created, and then this time, this new being, when the woman is created, that she can do that she... Yes, we're going to get there. Exactly. No, that's exactly right. It is the, the, the connecto, and ultimately the otherness of the woman that is both the problem and the solution. We're going to get there. I agree. I agree. And that's just actually, I think, what merges out of this, too. Um, Kiddush Levana. Take a breath. Kiddush Levana. Here's where I go with all this. I wanted a myth and a ritual for a commitment ceremony. And Kiddush Levana used to be called, when I was a kid growing up in Polish Lyle, the moon dance. It used to be called the moon dance. You go out, and you say this bracha, and you jump up and down three times, and you say shalom aleichem, and people say to you, like, shalom, and, and in this beautiful ritual of welcoming the new moon, a couple of things happen. Someone please read in English the blessing, by the way, this is said after the new moon appears, but before it's full. Someone please read. Blessed are you, Hashem. renews the month, Baruch, Aka Hashem Mechadish Chadashim. Could you read it another way, very easily? Blessed are you, Lord, who? Mm-hmm. Renews new things. <laughs> who creates newness. This is a blessing for renewal. By the way, Rosh Hashanah is also a kind of Yom Kippur, a mini Yom Kippur. You're supposed to renew your life every Rosh Hashanah. The blessing was not sufficient for the mystics. And what they did is they added all kinds of, of songs, which we could do inside if we wanted to, but we don't have the time. But take a look at the Yehirah Zone on page 13, which is the most exciting kind of <coughs> mystical imagination. And it's done in Orthodox synagogues all over the world <laughs> after Shabbat once a month. Yehirah Zone, someone please read. They do your will, Shem, my God, the God of my forefathers, till law of the moon, that there be no diminution in it. May the light of the moon be like the light of the sun, and like the light of the seven days of creation, as it was before it was diminished, as it is said, the two great luminaries. And may there be fulfilled upon us the birth of the curtain, they shall seek for Shem, their God, and David, their king. The prayer for the restoration of the moon to her former glory. The prayer for the restoration of the feminine to utter equality with the masculine. If you haven't read my book or haven't heard me speak about this, my tagline is homophobia is one small room in the larger hotel of misogyny. It is the diminution or the demotion of women that is the fuel of, of homophobia. Um, I don't have to, I'm not going to go into the details around that now because. That's a different conversation, but I really, really deeply believe that basically homophobia is about um, that. That's why no world where we haven't dealt with the equality of women can actually even conceptually deal with the equality of homosexuals. Um, uh, in any case, even if you don't want to go there yet, I can basically say that the very notion that, that hierarchy is the choice when you have 
pairs that don't know how to work out their relationship, that the resistance to that is our love is really profound. To claim the following. That, you know, no two people have lived